with you and we done today I'll be heading down the highway as usual but I came just to give you uh, encouragement to lift your hearts and your spirit maybe I would not be speaking to all of you I'm so grateful that Apostle Thomas is always in the spirit although we don't have conversation about what I'll talk about welcome to those who are viewing us live on Facebook as well in the room today I'm addressing people as well as on social media who may be sheep and some may be goats. Oh Lord. Who may be wheat and some may be tail. But there's another group who may be sons and who may be servants. And what I've come to realize is that whenever Yahweh chooses to make a distinction between people or differentiate between groups of people, they never have the same promise. Wheat and tear don't have the same promise. One is promised destruction. Amen. The other is promised life. Sheep and goat don't have the same promise. One is promised destruction. The other is promised life. Servants and sons. And when I say sons, I speak to those born out of a leader don't have the same promise. In Genesis chapter 15, Genesis 15, and all I need is a few minutes of your time. While I'm speaking this, I want to, for some reason Yahweh continues to have me address this matter of persons who, some of you are in here today, it's done. Just have this, like, 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 a passion for this deliverance thing, because you only get over it yet. Mm -hmm. This deliverance service business is still in some people's blood. I don't know you, don't bend your head, because I know you're talking to you. But some people who, like, 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 oh, you're so rich in your vein, that you just gotta have some magic before you feel you're always working. Some folk cannot accept the truth of Yahweh's word and live with it. It seems to be too simple. When Messiah said, you shall know the truth. And the truth shall set you free. That is not enough for some people. Because in Hosea he said to his own people, my people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge, not the lack of deliverance service. There was no different surface then. There was knowledge and there was ignorance. And he said, my people, my own people, not my enemies. My people, is Facebook okay? Facebook live? Yes. But some of them got to get this today. Yes. My people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge. He didn't stop the reader. Some of you call just a man. He said, for they have rejected my knowledge. Amen. I reject. So I shall reject them and their children. Yeah. That's a promise. So to those who may be in the room who get upset when knowledge is given to them, it's a sign that Yahweh has already rejected you and your offspring. And the different service doesn't fix that. Amen. Amen. You shall know the truth. And the truth that you know shall set you free. The trouble with knowing the truth is that it carries responsibility with it. Deliverance service carries offerings with it. So it's easier to just go put some money in a pan and the preacher holler and you run around and fall down and you feel good. But when you know the truth, it's not about money in a pan anymore or a basket. It's about accountability now for what you know. You all right? Good. You're going good so far. This is easy to put I can preach on your own. <laughs> right. Genesis chapter 15, verse 1. Sometime later, the word of Yahweh came to Avram. Well, the word of. Now, let me make this clear to you. Yahweh never gave Avram his name. Just know that. He gave Moshe his name. He said, I never revealed my name to Avram. He said, Abraham, that was not his name. So, 
he didn't make his name known at this stage to Avram. Avram just knew him as Lord. Is everybody there? Amen. Okay. So sometime later the word of Yahweh came to Avram in a vision. Don't be afraid, Avram. I am your protector. Your reward will be very great. Reward for doing what? Just give me 30 minutes of your time, you're going to be all right. Because some of you can't take more than 30 minutes have to say this morning. And if you're mad at me, blame Apostle, he asked me to come. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Good. When I got up at 6, got on my bicycle, Apostle rode down the highway, and I'm here. And come to your side. My legs tired, side effects are red. I think I preach my heart. So do I. If you get mad, blame Apostle Thomas. Not me. I'm just your humble servant. Good. Don't be afraid, Avram. I am your protector. You're finna get text for real. Genesis chapter 50. I promise you somebody you're mad at me this morning. Watch. If I see your face, I know you say, you are you fit. And I ask you, I know you get mad. Don't be afraid, Avram. I am your... Why am I saying that so often? Anointing oil is not your protector. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh, oh. That's right. That's right. Thank you, sis. So if you feel you got some oil stashed somewhere in your bag for me to bless, so your house will be protected. Oil is not your protector. Amen. Yahweh is your protector. Amen. Yahweh is your shield and your defense. Amen. If you believe in oil, protecting you, you're no other person. Yes. Get mad. Yes. You can't beat me after I preach a day. I don't know anyway. Come here. Let me say it again. If you believe that oil protects your house, you are in Torbia. If you sprinkle salt around your house, you're told it. If you sprinkle oil mixed with water, oil can't mix with water in the first place. Oil and water can't mix. It's called an emulsion. So there's not any anointing has the oil floating on the water. The oil is less dense than the water. So it shall rest on top of the water. Thank you. That's what anointing. So don't tell me when I shake this oil up, the anointing of God make the oil rise. You just missed science class. God in there. God in there. Thank you, sis. I don't like you, man. You don't get mad. Did you see that? Some people vex all they want. Anointing oil. The first thing is olive oil is not the complete. I know you're looking at bad to people. Olive oil is not the complete oil of anointing according to scripture. It was mixed with other things. Yes. It was perfumed in the first place. But don't worry about that part. Let me just address what you know to be the like oil. People believe with all their heart that if I have oil in my house, my house is protected. Yeah. You need to be delivered this morning. Yeah. Because you shall know the truth. And the truth shall set you free. Yahweh is your protector. Yes. When you know who your protector is, you don't need all in your house. Yes. You need knowledge in your head. Yes. Amen. Amen. So when the, okay, well, normally my, 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 my brother, my sister, even Mel when I was overseas and stuff, they used to have, especially in the States, something called a, 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 a oh Lord, what did they The lock the, lock the steering in the car. Uh, the clock. The clock. clock. Yes. You see me? So I shop, I said, why well, you got all these clubs in every vehicle in this yard? Club, 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 club. They said, possibly people steal vehicles around this yard. You gotta be careful. I said, be careful. Take it off. Take all off. Because unless he watches, the club locking in vain. Take it off. And prove Yahweh is able to preserve your stuff. They took it off and nobody had ever trouble the car. I'm gonna sleep in the car and lock sometime. I don't stress. Because if he is not my protector, the car, the, the, the alarm can't protect me. Yeah. You get it? You see, they get it more quiet now. You either believe that Yahweh is your protector, or you trust in things made by man. I say, you must knock your car. 
get a point. The point is where does your confidence lie? Amen. Amen. Some folk get up and they have to rub oil in the steering wheel. You're going to drop your driving a gutter because that's slippery. You don't put oil on car steering wheel to protect you. You're going to crash. Thank you, sis. Try back for the oil man. He said, I am your protector. Your reward will be great for doing what? I ask you again. Let me tell you why. Because Yahweh appeared to this man and said, leave your country. Leave your father's house. Leave your people. Go to a land that I will show you. And Abraham said, I don't know where you're showing me, but I'm going. That's why Yahweh said, now, on this journey right here, we already encountered trouble. After, after the, the, the kings and so on came and took Lot and he had some truck issues. So Yahweh said, hey doc, I got you covered. Don't worry. As long as you are following my instruction, I am your protector. And I have a reward for you because you have been obedient to what I told you. Alright, verse 2. Abram replied, Lord God, what good will your gifts be to me? If I continue childless, and Eliezer from Damascus inherits my possessions, what good is it? I can't find two preachers today, or five, who will say, Yahweh, although you promised me all these things, it is better for me to have an inheritance from my body. They'd have been shouting over stuff. But he said, I, all the gifts you give me, cannot satisfy me because I don't have a son to inherit my possession. I told you I'm talking to sons and servants today. He said I have a servant but I don't have a son. And I don't want my servant although he's faithful to possess my inheritance because I want my son to acquire my inheritance. All right. All right, 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 right. So there are those who attend come as your ministries faithfully. You've been here for a long time. And you say when they ask you which church do you attend, I attend Tamu Church. Tamu doesn't have any church. No, no. <laughs> no. We are a part of the body of Messiah, Yeshua. Amen. We don't want any church. But the, 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 the talk is I go to Tamu Church. And there are persons who are faithful servants. But they're not sons of God. Some I don't know what happens here. Because I think George Tom was in time if I'm in and I'm in phase in my house. But there's some people, and I found the other two right here in faith. Some people who love to do work. In church, oh, uh, right. brother. Right. but they don't like to be instructed from the word right. uh -huh. of Yahweh. Uh -huh. They will do work in church, but don't follow instructions from the word. There's some people who are faithful servants, but disobedient to instruction. Some folks say Yeshua, but can't follow Yeshua's instruction. All right. All right. Amen. Preach that. All right. Preach that. Amen. Some folk will do everything where labor is concerned, but they fail to do what spiritual maturity requires, which is obeying divine instruction. And Abraham said, I have a servant. And although he's faithful, I don't want him to inherit my possession. Because possessions from a father are supposed to be given to a son. Yes. Yes. Don't get it in a minute. Yes. If you look to Apostle Thomas as a father in ministry, then your focus must not be on what you can do physically. Wow. All right. It must be on what do you inherit from him spiritually. Oh, thank you, sister. There, 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 there's some people who have got a desire in their heart because, okay, in the old church, I always did work. Uh -huh. All right. 
But what did that work do for you? If we are not careful, there shall be many servants raised in ministries, but not sons that inherit possessions from a father. Amen. 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 There, are certain, there are certain blessings. Okay, let me give you scripture. The New Testament says this is over. Shaul had many persons who served around him. But he addressed certain sons of his in ministry. Like Timothy, like Philemon, he said, Timothy, you're my beloved son. And there were certain benefits Timothy had that not that the average person didn't possess. He said, Timothy, observe, you know my walk. You know my conduct. You know my suffering. You know my perseverance. Sons are able to stand in the street and say, you can't say that about my father. Amen. Hallelujah. Because I have observed his life. And I know exactly what he stands for. If you are a servant and they talk about your boss, the most you can say is, he gives me my paycheck when the weekend. Or when the month ends, I get my salary. So I'm so concerned. As long as I'm being paid, I'm fine. But a son has care about the integrity and the image of his father. Yes. You're in like that. Yes. All right, we are in the second. We are in the second. Because we are called to raise sons. So who told the church in Corinth, he said you could have 10,000 instructors, but you have one father. Right. And he said, that's me because you were born out of my gospel. We're going somewhere with this now. There's some persons who came to this ministry because, okay, then they were intellectually convinced that the Messiah's name is Yeshua. Yes. Intellectually convinced means that you, you, you did your own research. <laughs> May I drink water in fellowship because I feel thirsty. I'm not fine. Drink the oil. Drink the oil. Aha, good. Some folk are here because they are intellectually convinced that the Messiah's name is Yeshua and his father's name is Yahweh. They did research. They had no revelation. They did research. They read. And they say, according to what I've read and I watch YouTube videos, that seems to be the truth. There was not the preaching of righteousness that got you here. All right. It's a research that got you here. I'll tell you why it has a problem. Because if persons come based on what they've researched, then they were not born out of a message of righteousness. All right, all they were right. convinced by researching something from a book. Right. Or maybe from a line. That does not produce submission unless you are convinced that the leader before you was sent to tell you the truth. Amen. You might as well say amen. 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 Didn't I tell you I don't get vexed, man? So we'll be vexed for now. Which brother? You're vexed. No. My girl, I'll thank you, dear. This is about to be vexed. Good, wonderful. We vexed yet. <laughs> when research, boy, listen here. When research is what brought you here, then any instruction that you don't like, you will not obey until you research and find it to be so. That is not sonship. That distrust for leadership. Shaul, according to scripture, recorded that when the saints at Thessalonica heard them preach, they believed it was Yahweh himself talking. That's sonship. But you have not you have an, in my opinion, spirit in the church. Oh boy. Oh boy. I don't think he should say that. I don't feel he should treat sodomites that way. I don't believe. In my opinion, I don't think 
That's not sanction. Because first of all, the apostles of Yeshua are abnormal people. They don't function by society's norms and standards. We are different. We are saints you are from the kingdom of heaven. I don't know why I came to talk to you this morning. Amen. You were born in the earth. But you are of the kingdom of heaven. Amen. Philippians 3.20 says that you are citizens of the kingdom of heaven. Yes. Yes. It means then that the things that normal people do, you should not feel normal doing. Yes. You're a different person. Yes. From a different kingdom. Yes. That's right. You, most of you in this room, are Guyanese by birth. Uh -huh. But you're not Guyanese by spirit. Yeah. All right. All right. You're from a different kingdom. Yeah. Culture does not determine your behavior. All right. All right. You are from a different kingdom. Yeah. You have folks, some of you follow me on Facebook, see the, the, the hurricane destroy the Bahamas in Jesus name because yeah. that's what they said it wouldn't happen it did happen in Jesus name uh -huh. and the people are mad how can you talk about the Bahamas these are preachers how can you talk about the Bahamas are you supposed to be a citizen of the kingdom of heaven Yahweh never called you to be a patriotic person he called you to be a preacher of righteousness Amen. if the nation is in sin the preacher of righteousness is against the nation that said it you don't defend a sinful nation. No, you don't. Amen. And I said to them, if I could talk about Guyana, I'd talk about any part of the world. Yes. You got preachers not saying Guyana is a blessed nation. Oh, Guyana is because it got oil now. Guyana is a blessed nation. So what about all the innocent babies that are monitoring? Right. How are you blessed for shedding innocent blood? You have preachers who have forgotten that it's legal to kill babies in Guyana. Yeah. Alright. Mm -hmm. Alright. Since 1991, I think it was, it became lawful for a child to be aborted in this country. Yeah. You want scripture for that? So Yahweh said, I hate. Listen to this term. I hate the hands that shed innocent blood. Uh, yeah. What did the child in the womb do? So it's innocent. Yeah. So in Guyana, it's legal to kill an innocent child. Because there are no fetus, it's a child. But preachers say they smell bread. Messiah, he smelled bread in the oven made because oil in the, in the sea. Bread. You forgot what the prophet told the one who wanted to talk up to him. He said, You shall see the well, but you won't touch it. All right. Read the book. It's wow. written. He said, you want to challenge my prophetic word, you will see the world, but you'll never enjoy it. And when they ran to get it, he was trampled upon and he died. Yes. He yes. saw the world, but never touched it. Yeah. Yeah. Good you call the president a man of God, and he has not said anything about abortion being removed from, from being okay. If you have a godly president, then the mind of Yahweh will be upon him. And he shall say that we cannot continue to kill our innocent children. Yes. That's what the man of God does when he's in prison. Yes. His wife, if she were God, he would have said, Boy, we can't keep killing these babies like this. That's right. No. But they have a greater interest in anti manism. Yeah. What they're doing their private life, you are respecting it. I tell you, our preachers in the Bahamas, you can't even talk like this. Because you're scared of your own leader. Uh -huh. I'm not afraid of the president of Guyana. He can't be doing anything to me. What else can he do to me? Nothing else. Nothing. What can he do to me? Why must I call him righteous if he's wrong? All right. Yahweh is my protector. Amen. Yahweh is my shield. Amen. Yahweh is my defense. Hallelujah. Thank you, sir. Tavram said, man, listen here. I don't have a child. 
and I want my possessions to go to my child. There's a father who always wants to impart to his children. But there has to be obedience attached to it. There has to be trust attached to it. You don't have to like the instruction. All right. Just the way. Verse 3. You haven't given me a child. Avram continued, so someone born in my house will be my heir. But the word of Yahweh came to him. This man will not be your heir. No. Your heir will be a child from your own body. I'm talking to you today about oppressed with a promise. So some Bible school people like that have topic. It will be a child from your body. Then he brought him outside and said, Look up at the sky and count the stars if you can count them. Your descendants will be that many. Remember, Abraham is an old man now. Yes. He believed the Lord. And Yahweh credited it to him as righteousness. He never had the law, he never kept the Sabbath day. He simply believed what Yahweh said. All right, good. Now let's go down to verse 30. The Lord said to him, to Aphra, Know this for certain. Talking about oppressed with a promise. Know this for certain. Remember he told him he loved his sentence like the stars now. Right? Good. He said, Know this for certain. Your descendants will be foreigners in a land that is not theirs. They, in verse 30, they will be slaves and held in oppression there for 400 years. Avram said, I want a child yep. to inherit my possession. Yahweh said, I will just give you a child and give you descendants right. that you can't count. Right. That's a blessing. Right. Now, in, in the blessing, he said, your descendants that you can't count right. will become foreigners in a land that's not their own land. Yeah. They will be slaves and held in oppression for 400 years. He had a promise. Before any one of his descendants would have been born, Yahweh said, y'all will be slaves. But there's a promise. All you God is love people we talking here today. All you freedom, free will people we talking here today. What choice did they have? Because one even born yet. When Yahweh said, you shall become slaves before you even born. That's your future. So when famine hit the land, and Yosef went when there's a slave, or before famine came, Yosef had to be sold by his brothers. And he was sold by his brothers and he was ended up in Egypt. While in Egypt, he couldn't understand, why am I suffering like this and I'm innocent? All right. All right. Yahweh said, you're innocent because there's a promise. Yeah. Yeah. And since I have made a covenant with Abraham, that you shall be slaves in this country. Yes, sir. Your brothers have to hate you. They can end up in Egypt. Right. Then he interpreted Pharaoh's dream and he became the second in charge of the nation. And oh my God, everybody may have celebrated. Whoa! My brother Joseph is a big boy. And Yahweh said, that's not the promise. All right. uh -oh. that's not the, promise. the promise is not about Joseph's power. So Joseph is in the palace controlling Egypt. And Yahweh said, that's not the promise. The promise I made to Avram is that you shall be slaves, not king. Okay? So Yosef had to die. And the kind Pharaoh had to die. And there was another one over time who did not know the good things Yosef did for Egypt. For, for, for Israel. For Egypt, sorry. And Yahweh said, now you the man I want. I want one who will not remember the kindness of Yosef. And I want one who will oppress the people of Israel. Because my promise is that they will be oppressed. And for them to be oppressed, there has to be a pharaoh who will rise and forget what his father experienced. Yes. Yes. 
What does this have to do with some of y'all in here? There's a promise over your head. But the promise will not be fulfilled unless you are oppressed for a period. You could travel all around Guyana if you want. You will never get relief because the relief doesn't come from man. All right. It comes from Yahweh's promise to you. Look at verse 14, then if you want verse 14. But I will also judge the nation that oppresses my people. I will judge that nation, the one that makes them slaves. Afterwards, your descendants will leave with many possessions. All right. wow. All right. Okay then. All right. So there's a package here whereby Abraham's descendants must become slaves. They must be oppressed. Why must they be oppressed? Because Yahweh has a nation to judge. Yes. 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 Right. yes. I'll close my Bible and go home. Yes. If something other I just said to you. Yes. Why did you have to suffer what you suffer? It's not about you. No. no. Yahweh wants to make war with some of your enemies. And he's saying, in order for me to deal with them, they have to mistreat you. Who am I talking to this morning? He wants to deal with them. But in order for him to deal with them, they have to oppress you. The nail must be cussing you every day. And Yahweh said, cuss some more. Get up and cuss some more because I want to judge you. In order to judge you, you must live beside a saint. Who am I talking to this morning? I want to kill you. In order to kill you, you must live right beside my child. And you must suppress my child. You must bother them all the time. Even the police can't stop you. Because I want to kill you. Amen. You don't understand why you suffer. Some of you say, well, God, oh God, forgive me, forgive me for what? For being righteous? For being chosen to be oppressed? So that he could judge the wicked? You are selected, you are handpicked by Yahweh to deal with that person that think they're bad. And he said, just for a season, you shall endure hardship. But in my mind, I want to deal with them. You see, if you understand promises, you don't cry out by oppression. When you understand promise, you say, Yahweh, you will keep me through the oppression. Because I know at the end of this road right here, they will suffer not me. The promise is I have possessions. They have trouble. Can you imagine the first set, the first hundred years, persons were working and dying. And they're saying, I believe that this God right here has forgotten about us. And I'll be saying, forget about you, boy. I promised Abraham 400 years you'll be oppressed for. This is year 100. So some of them die. And I say, well, maybe he doesn't love us as much as he said he does. But Yahweh's promise is not about your convenience. All right. If All right. he says 400 years, yes, oh, but what they didn't understand is, whenever they made a child, they reproduced themselves. So, so, so though the father died in Egypt, the descendants are being born with a promise. Yes, sir. Yes. Right. Yes. Right. Yes. Right. yes, sir. Right. You see, if you're selfish, you say, let the promise be for me. Hmm. But Yahweh said, your descendants yeah. will inherit the promise. The descendants are those who born out of your loins. They shall multiply and multiply and multiply. And whenever they multiply or they reproduce, the promise is on the child who's born. Right. Wow. They inherit the promise given to their father. Amen. So if you've got any sense in this ministry, you'll begin to tell your child about the promises that they have over their head. Okay then, because in Galatians it said that we have inherited the promises of Abraham. That's what it said. Right. When you are saved, you have the promise of Abraham over your head. The promise of Abraham is that although you are oppressed for a season, your descendants will always be blessed in the end of it. 
Yahweh said, 400 years. But I will also judge the nation, the one that makes them slaves. And after I finish judging them, they will leave, the descendants will leave with many possessions. Let's go to verse 16. Only in the fourth generation will your descendants come back here. Because only then will the Emory, King James the Amorite, Emory, be ripe for punishment. What does that mean? For four generations, Israel is inconvenienced. Because Yahweh said, the enemy has to become ripe, like fruits on a tree for punishment. You hear me? Yeah. For four generations. In other words, he's saying, let their wickedness increase Amen. until it's ripe enough for me to judge them. Yes. You see, on a human scale, you look and see, you mean to tell me that God can't judge them yet? Yahweh said, no, no, yet. Yeah. They're still green. They're still green. They're wicked enough yet. Some of them look at you and say, you ask me this issue of nonsense and you say, you, you should drop it dead. Yeah, I said, not yet. Uh -huh. Let them continue to disrespect my name and my son's name. I ain't ready for them yet. Yeah. Let them keep feeling as though they could say it as if it's all right. Because when the time is ripe, yeah. then I shall act and deal with them. Because those who oppress you are oppressing you while you have a promise. You got some family members, I tell you all, that would start for you on your best day. Yes. Bless your heart. Yes. When you feel that they get it, yeah. <laughs> and thank God they say, well, boy, at last they understand. Yeah. Huh? Under yeah. who? Yeah. They come right back around. Yeah. Thank you, sis. <laughs> They come right back. Why are you saying that to be following Nigel and, and, and a post? They can't get over it. Right. And you start a conversation all over again that if Yeshua is the name, why you can't use the correct name? You know the truth. Why you can't follow it? And they begin to challenge you and Yahweh said, it isn't right yet. Yeah. Yeah. Some of you ladies in here, your husband feel that he can do whatever he wants and carry on, carry on, carry on. Because after all, you want to follow this foolishness so you can talk food to you and carry on. Yeah. Yeah, I always say, I ain't ready to do it to me. Yeah. Yeah. He ain't ripe yet. Right. He's still green. Yeah. And then in the end, you say, turn in. Yeah. Yeah. I ain't for you to turn in, man. Go turn right. You're, you're half right. Yeah. They're going on the corner now because Yahweh has a promise over your head. Saints, I'm here to tell you this afternoon, this, this morning. Do not become discouraged when you understand the promise. Amen. Amen. Don't, don't ever let yourself become discouraged because of oppression. Oppression is necessary for you to get to your possession. Amen. Amen. They have to, they, they must. You're on the job and they want to bypass your, 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 your promotion and bypass your application, let them keep doing it, man. Let them keep doing these things to you because there's a promise attached. There's a promise attached. They can cook it all they want. They can hide it all they want. They can deny the contract all they want. There's a promise attached to the inconvenience. Yahweh said, just a matter of time, because they ain't ripe yet. Some of them turn in. They're now back in the corner for right now. Hold on. Wait. Just a little while longer. And you shall see the deliverance which is the Yeshua of Yahweh. You shall see the manifestation of the promise of Yahweh. Just give it some time. Do not become discouraged. You 
are not a heathen. No. You are not a child of the world. Amen. You don't work at the world. No. 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 Since I'm on this topic, some of y'all might be seeing the news with pastor after pastor killing himself. Suicide, and you say, I wonder how could a pastor commit suicide because he's preaching in the wrong name. Yeah. It's that simple. If you want to preach a lie, Yahweh will not preserve your mind. Thank you. Amen. If you're a saint in this room today, right before my eyes, and you say, Apostle, I want to kill myself, you need deliverance. Yeah. Which yes. is the truth. That's what delivers you. Right. Not handling on you, you need to hear the truth from my mouth. Yeah. The truth is, Yeshua said, if you worry, would it add anything to you? No. No. Worrying is a sign of disrespect to Yahweh. Because if you trust Yahweh, he said, you are going to be strong. Yes. Yes. Worrying is a sign of distrust. Yes. Yes. Being oppressed is not the same as being depressed. All right. All right. Yes. Saints are not to be depressed. Are y'all all right? Yes. I'm about to go to Georgetown now, so this is where we're supposed to get, get wrong. Good. You are not supposed to be depressed about anything in this life. Because depression means your soul has gotten so weary by the work of Yahweh that you're bothered. You don't trust what he's doing for you. Yahweh said in his word that the steps of the righteous are ordered. Is what it said yeah. by Yahweh, and He delights in the steps that He ordered for you. Yeah. So if Yahweh said that you would lose a man and lose a woman and lose and lose and lose, that is the ordering of your steps. Yes, 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 yes. 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 Do you trust it? Yes. So why are you worried? Do you trust Him? I trust Yahweh with my life. Yeah. That's when doctors tell me, oh, you have to be careful. If you sit and cock the corner across your leg, your spine could snap. I said, spine could snap. You ain't God. Yes. You're not Yahweh. He knows what happens to me in life. Right. That's why I do crazy things. I'm going to buy Superman George on the linen because I want to show them. You say my spine will break because it's brittle and it didn't break. <laughs> But that was going to be 20 years ago. Why? Because I will show them that you don't determine my future. The steps of the righteous are ordered by Yahweh. And he delights in the ways of the righteous. When your neighbor oppressing you, don't be crying and skinning your face. Never let wicked people see you cry because of what they do. Yes. All right. All right. Come on, let's bang the from Yes. Let's bang the dangerous curve now. When you see neighbors start costume being stupid, say cost some more. Mm -hmm. Tell them you're using, you're using the right word yet. You gotta find some more word, man. Come on, that one, the effort is too frequent. Find one more. <laughs> That's when you drive them crazy. Say so you're costing right, you gotta cost properly. You don't cost fast, slow down. Let them see that you are not bothered by their foolishness. You don't stand and tell no neighbor, how could you do this? How could you talk to me like that? How could you? You don't know, no, no. You don't expect a sinner to have mercy on you. All right. Amen. You are supposed to be hated. Amen. That's word. Don't let them get into your head. Let them misbehave all they want. Because Yahweh is your protector. Amen. I tell you, let them throw what they have to throw in your yard. Don't turn up. In the name of Yeshua, I cast it back. Don't do that foolishness. Don't waste his name for that nonsense. All right. All right, brother. Amen. No. All right. When they want to throw J's fluid or the vent over the yard, tell them, throw some more. Because yeah. it got to smell right. I like the fragrance. Throw it. Come to Mr. Connors or so. Throw it on the side. Throw the back in. Tell them, cut your four corners of my yard. Let it smell right. I like the fragrance. Yeah, said, throw it back. Look, I got the dog. Pen, throw it by the puppy pen because I like a puppy smelling. Throw it in around the dog kennel, man. You got the blood. The blood. Don't use the blood for foolishness. The blood of Yeshua is not to be used by you in the first place. Amen. It washes you from sin. Amen. 
You don't use it against your neighbor when white defender, black defender, green defender. Thank you. So you cross your leg and say, listen, listen here, sis. You missed that end of the yard. You can't throw by the gate and don't throw that side. Then catch you out of the corner. Yes, when they want to throw salt, say, find the tree and then bear a tree by the tree. Throw it that way. We'll kill some grass and stuff, man. Come. Say, you got a brush. Gotta come cut some grass because you got a lot of time. Cut the grass, too. You don't be telling no neighbor about the blood, the blood. And I plead the blood and you go on your church. I pray for you. When they say, come to you, do not waste your time. Yahweh is your protector. Your protector sees what the wicked wants to do to you. He knows, David said, the path I take. And when he would have tried me, I must come forth as pure gold. The path you take as a saint is never one of being depressed. Hallelujah. But of course you don't understand the pain I feel. I ain't supposed to understand. His word is beyond what you feel. Amen. 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 So, don't you get depressed? Me for what? I could get depressed when I got wife and food. You must be crazy, boy. Not me. And wonderful children. And four dogs. How many are we done? Five. One on the back. One this sharp foot one. Depressed? Who? I can't find a creature on this planet to make me become bothered. But apostles, they don't like you. They say all these bad things about you. Messiah said, rejoice. Not get depressed. Rejoice when they speak all manner of evil against you for my name's sake. That's the book. Yes, yes, yes. No, thank you. I got time worried with them and lay my bed on. I can't see because they talk my name. I must be crazy. Not me. No, no. If you want me to get depressed, just like your friend don't cook. <laughs> That's why I get worried. I, I like me hungry, you know, unless I'm fasting. But I don't see food around me. Are oh, you yeah, alright, boy? I ain't got no problem. But I'm inside the and you got TJ, I can't consist of Tracy, make a cake, and I feel like having a sweet tooth. <laughs> Deep breath. Me. When I come to live in the bus, I say, hey, the banana tree, I like a baku. Where is the banana bearing? I'm the happiest man on the planet. The banana tree bearing, boy, listen here. Depression, you couldn't say what. I got sheep and them, them, ah, 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 ah. Puri, as is the max, ah, 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 what they mean? Mommy. How am I getting depressed? I'm burnt. That's insane, stop it. You must not be moping around like you don't have a God that is true and living. You serve the only true and living God. Behave like that. Come on, y'all. You need to go home today. Some of y'all look in the mirror and say, listen, catch yourself. Stop it. All right. Don't you try to think you're crazy so that you go home and find the mirror and say, you, stop your foolishness. Yahweh, the scripture says, knows how, and I close, to deliver the righteous. That is it. Yahweh knows how to deliver the righteous. It means for him to deliver you, you have to be bound by something or someone. And he wants you to see his deliverance, which is Yeshua. How will you see deliverance if you never had possession by someone? He said, no, somebody has to have you under pressure for me to show up because the oil is a shadow of what was to come. So Yeshua being in Egypt is a shadow of you being in sin. And he said, when the time is right, I will deliver you. But not just you, your descendants shall be delivered. It will only be for a season. So, Apostle, what about the possessions part? I want some money. No, 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 no. The saints have a possession that says you have everything. 
that pertains to life and godliness. That's your possession. Every single thing you need, Yahweh has given to you. It's called godliness and life. Everything you need has been provided for you already. Do not worry about the wicked. I read the book and David said, I look and they were prospering God. And when I look back, wow. that's so quickly the wicked vanish. Every time in my life, I had a neighbor that troubled me, I didn't move. Never once. When they play music too hard, I say, Father, I neighbor. But I can't speak. Before you know it, they're gone. I don't know where they go. Disappear. Somehow my neighbors know that they don't cuss me. For some reason, they know that that's one night don't cross. For some reason, something telling them no cussing. Because funeral has come fast. <laughs> right. Because I ain't cuss you back. Once you want to use foul language to me and my family, I promise you, I can watch a horse come pick you all up very soon. Because Yahweh knows how to deliver the righteous. Let us stand safe. And let us stand as a sign today that you are understanding who you're standing in. You are a saint. You've been saved by the power of Yahweh. And he knows how to deliver the righteous. Don't worry about them. Your oppression is not by the power of man. It's by the will of your father. Because he has some enemies to judge. And he just has to find a saint for them to ill-treat. And you were chosen to be one. Some you don't understand. Why certain companies shut down. It's because how they treat you. Some people who feel that they could mistreat you on the job, I tell you. Before you even wink. They'll be gone. Yahweh is faithful. And I thank him for giving you the strength. The scripture says, lift up your heads, O ye gates. And be lifted up, you everlasting doors. The people he's talking about. And the king of glory shall come in. Who is the king? Yahweh, is it the Lord? He has a name. Amen. Yahweh Almighty. He is the King of Glory. When your head is bowed down in depression, you are telling the whole world that your God that you boast about doesn't know how to deal with you. Lift up your head. Lift up your head and be lifted up. Apostle Thomas doesn't have to understand anything. He has to proclaim the right thing. Which is that Yahweh knows how to deliver the righteous. Whatever you're going through doesn't put heaven in emergency mode. He knows how to deliver the righteous. May blessings abound to you. And may sons and daughters arise in this ministry to inherit the possessions of a father. Which will be spiritual blessings which will be words of truth imparted to you to give you boldness and strength and to not walk in ignorance, which will be integrity to be upright. May that be a portion. I bless you today in Yeshua's name. And may Yahweh grant shalom to you as he keeps you. May wisdom be upon the leaders of this fellowship. Increase in wisdom. To make judgments that are right and direct you in righteousness. Today I'm grateful for the saints who are being immersed because they understand that they're being buried with Messiah and they're being raised in a newness of life according to his word. Blessing saints, shalom and I love y'all. Do well. Bye Facebook peers as well.
Yes, yes, thank you.